We haven't tried it. I've never heard of it. What is this? It, it's enjoyable to me. I'm telling you, I could skull this whole drink, no problem. If I like this food, it must mean it's very good. Oh, Filipinos, in my opinion, do some of the best pork in the world. All-time favorite for a lot of people, crispy pata. Okay. Here you go. You know what? Screw the pork. Shall um, I? Yeah, go, go, go. I'm on the verge of swearing to describe to you how much I'm enjoying this rice. Yeah. That How did they do that? There's no way you're convincing me this is gonna be good. Whoever thought of this is a legitimate game. This, this, this is, is incredible. Action. All right, ladies and gents, it's finally happened. Mike's in Manila. We're in the Philippines. We're here to finally get to try some proper Filipino food. We certainly are. When you say proper, though, I had Filipino food in Sydney, Australia, and I posted pictures on Facebook and Twitter, and all the Pinoys came out of the woodworks, and they said, <laughs> "Oh, Mike, it's..." You're eating all the fancy food. You're, you're not eating true Filipino authentic cultural food because apparently my food is westernized. So here we are. <laughs> I am in the motherland. There's no excuses. We are eating actual authentic Filipino food. And let me tell you, John, I'm going to be critiquing the hell out of it because I haven't had anything bad yet here. Yeah. So I'm expecting great things. It should be good. Like, I'm, I'm excited. I saw the pictures of the food in the menu. It looked really I'll nice. I'll be the judge, John. Okay. okay. We'll find out. <laughs> what kind of annoys me is I come to countries like this mm -hmm. and all this food costs like no money. Yeah. And in Australia, if I ordered one dish, it would like be the equivalent of all this food. You know what I mean? When we were having some beers last night, right? Yeah. And I saw the price. One dish, this dish costs as much as that one beer. Yeah. Okay. That's it. And I was laughing at that as well. Like you guys were, you thought the beer was expensive yeah. at the hotel. We, all the Australians just laughed at you. Like, They're expensive. like, oh, it's cheap. This it's is cheap. cheap. What are you talking about? It's hotel beer at 250 pesos, man. No, that's, uh, that's not expensive for us, Jonathan. Let me tell you, that is not expensive. <laughs> How do we start this feast? I guess we could try a taste, like a tasting menu first. I think it's appropriate to start with something like, not the rice. To start with this, this is the gising gising. Okay. Now this is something that I haven't tried myself. You haven't tried it? No, I've, I've never heard of it. What? I don't know what it is. At least, uh, what, what is gising gising? It's like, um, it's like vegetables sauteed in like coconut milk. Coconut? I don't oh. know what that vegetable is though. Oh, so it's, it's like, like, it's yeah, like a yeah. Bicol Express. Yeah, yeah, a little okay. bit. Okay, so it's, it's like... Oh, we're gonna get roasted for being good. Yeah, <laughs> you were like, how are you guys, how are you, how are you guys working? I'm from Davao, okay? Give See, me your plate fact, over. my wife is half uh, Samoan, so... Coconut cream is something they use very often in Samoan cuisine. Yeah. So I'm, this shouldn't be too different from right. what I've already experienced here from, from the old bull and chain, as they call it. Like, Literally everything is coconut cream. Everything. Really? Let's have a bite and let's see what's like. It's pretty damn good. It is surprisingly really damn good. It is almost like a Biko Express. A Biko Express is a um, certain sprout. I'm going to get roasted for that again. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's same veg cooked in the same sauce, but it's spicy. Mm. This is like that without the spice and it's, it's pleasant. I can't tell what the vegetable is. What is the vegetable? What is this? I can't tell by the shape. On the top of my head, I was about to say okra, but it's not slimy. What is the protein? I think it's pork. Yeah, oh. it looks like just shredded pork. So normally we'd be eating it with rice, but we're gonna taste a little bit of everything first. You guys pack so much flavor yeah. into this. The Samoan food I've had, it's, it does taste a bit more plain. Right, really? Which is the nicest way to put it. You told me coconut cream, I was kind of expecting a similar thing where the flavor wasn't going to hit me that hard. But I'm, I don't know, I'm tasting a lot. It tastes kind of intense. The pork's delicious as yeah. well. I don't think I've ever had pork and coconut cream. Really? If you told me that that was a dish, I wouldn't believe that'd be very good. Really? But this is really damn good. We've got about 10 different dishes, so we start on another one. Right? Sure, sure, sure. The palabok. So palabok is a glass noodle almost. Okay. Cooked in with shrimp paste made from the shrimp head. Oh! So, so you see the shrimp here. Traditionally, this is served in a big thing that we call a bilawa, like a big serving for a group or a family. Mm. You have that there. You cook up your shrimps. You boil them up, right? You devein them, do whatever. Right. Take the heads off. That, those heads you crush down. Yeah. And it turns into the sauce for this. Right, okay. And yeah, so you have that with the noodles. You have the shrimps, of course. You have more seafood. This one's fancy with squid. You have an egg, usually. And then you have, like, yeah, this, this is bits of chicharron. So like crispy, Pork rinds, pork skin. Oh, so deep fried okay. pork skin, crisped okay. up, and then you just have at it. Like that all is mix very in. damn good. Really? Everyone hated palabra. Oh yeah, so. Really? So yeah, so there was a town piece we did uh, where we did like Jollibee. They had a palabra. Now, mind you, Jollibee palabra, it's not gonna be the creme de la creme fast food. Okay. But none of them liked it. 
Okay, well, I'm like, ah. I mean, to be fair, you know, they're, they're not part of talent anymore, so who cares? <laughs> who cares? I thought it was going to be more of an intense flavor, I'll be mm -hmm. honest. When I ate the, the, the shrimp, I was like, oh, okay, there's a lot of flavor going on here. I was expecting a bit more. It's like a pleasant kind of calm flavor. Mm. Calm is the way I want to put it, you know what I mean? It's, it doesn't, you know, blow up your palate or anything, but it, it it's enjoyable to me. You know, I don't really understand how the talent boys didn't like it. I, I wouldn't say there's any kind of disgusting flavor to it. It, it just, it's pleasant. You and know? it is. What's with the egg though? Uh, it's just egg. I, I don't know what's on top of it. What's on the red thing? What's the red thing? I have never seen that. Go oh, take I'll a take cut. Give it a shot. It's an egg. Yeah, it looks I like. Confirm. I think it's just a sauce <laughs> and splashed in, yeah. So what we've got here for each of us is something called calamansi juice. Calamansi is. It's, so. It smells like lemon. So it smells like lemon. The flavor profile is similar to lemon. But calamansi is like, it's a small punitive lemon. It's a bit different, maybe a little bit more tart. Very zesty. Compared. Yeah. Give it a try. This is what we normally drink. Cheers to you, sir. Wow. Oh, that's a good mix in this one. I was expecting a lot more tart. Now, you, here's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. Bit of a Middle Eastern background yeah. here. We tend to eat a lot of lemons. We tend to eat a lot of vinegar. This is very uh, mild, if you ask this me. This is mild. I'm telling you, I could skull this whole drink, no problem. Okay, I agree with you. It's a little bit lighter. And the calamansi, it's but mild as hell. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's also not as sweet, which I prefer. I prefer it more calamansi. Yeah. So it's like, it's a middle ground. I mean, it, it's enjoyable. It's enjoyable. I'm thirsty. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy drinking. That's good. Right? That's but if great. you gave me water with a lemon slice in it, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. Yeah, this, this doesn't kick as much. We will try some sisig. Traditionally, it's made of leftover pork pieces. Okay. So it was cooked up near a um, military base. How it was made was the most affordable cut was the head because that's what the Americans didn't cook. So people bite ahead, use the face to cook this up. Okay. Most of the foods we've eaten so far, I generally don't enjoy having proteins like that, like the prawn head yeah. or the, the pig's head meat. Mm. That is something I would usually be kind of revolted by. So yeah. I'm just going to say, if I like this food, it must mean it's very good, yeah. at least to me. Because I'm saying, even if it was like an eight out of 10, I would be like, no. I'm fairly confident you like it. Okay. Because literally everyone that has a, had a fear of like pig head, pig ears, whatever, have enjoyed this. Normally, you have this with beer. Okay, I, I mean, pork is, is usually very good when it comes yes. to having it with alcohol. Mm. Oh, yeah. I love when you when you eat a bit of pork, it's crispy in your mouth, it's crackling, saltiness, you know what I mean? Fat, melting it. I mean, this is fantastic. If I knew a pig's head tasted this damn good, I want to say, Filipinos, in my opinion, do some of the best pork in the world. I haven't had that much Filipino food, right? But when I do have the pork dishes, I want to say they usually do it better than, than most most different countries. That's no offense to anyone else, but I do tend to enjoy their pork a lot more. This is going to be a good one as well. All-time favorite for a lot of people, crispy pata. Okay. So pata is basically Thai. I had to reach into my memory for that because when I was a kid, I would ride a car with my okay. my aunt and she would like grab my tie and say, this is some crispy pata right here. <laughs> here you go. You know, I'm screwed the fork. Shall oh, I? Yeah, go, go, go. Mm, that's good. I know you had something good. similar in Australia. This is really good. My wife makes a lot of pork crackling, you know? Yeah. I know it's not the same thing. This yeah. is really, really, really damn good. Like, I'm on the verge of swearing to describe to you how much I'm enjoying this right now. Have, have a little bit I of hope meat. my wife's not watching, Jonathan, because I'm going to straight up say it. This is way better. I think, I think the moment this she sees better. pictures, She's gonna be so jealous. I think if she tastes this, she would agree. She might need to go take some lessons from the chef. Still the tie, which one thing we forgot. You have it with this soy sauce vinegar mix. So that's mainly our dipping for deep fried stuff. What's the texture here? Like it's like an almost like a dusty texture going on. Almost a dusty texture? I don't know how to explain it to you. It's, it's a weird texture. Oh yeah, because I the, like it. it's like a dry and deep fried thing. So it does kind of crumble up. So normally you have it with a little soy sauce and vinegar. Try it with this. I don't know if you'll, yeah, okay. That's a good mix. That it is. I've, I kind of want to jump us onto the soup. Technically, two of the same dishes. So it's both sinigang. Okay. And sinigang is, I've heard people compare it to something like tom yam. It is a tamarind soup. So it's a sar soup, normally with pork, beef, or seafood. Tamarind soup? Yeah. So the sarness is from the tamarind fruit. This can be a little bit more hit and miss. I'm just gonna have some of the soup first. Okay. Oh. I would have never expected that flavor. How did they do that? I will say one thing. It's not as sour as I like. I like it really sour. It gets sour. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. At home, we, we keep it extra sour. My now, dad gets so mad when I'm there. Now you're turning me on, Jonathan. Yeah, yeah no. Be careful. I have a very specific palate for sinigang. And when my mom makes it, she always asks me to taste first just to make sure it's sour enough. When it's sour enough for me, it's too sour for my dad. Yeah? I'm glad. Sinigang is one of my favorites. 
Mm. Truly one of my favorites. It's so tender. Sinigang is actually an everyday food. Talk to me, talk to me though. You know, it's talk like this is this is food that if you're in a calendaria, they normally give you a rice meal, then they'll give you soup. It's almost always sinigang. Or like nilaga, which is just a stew. So this is something everyone experiences, everyone loves, and it is. I love as well. Is this what you're talking? Is this the what no, no, the tamarind's not in there. So what is this? It's, uh, I believe that's eggplant. So it's a hearty stew, you throw a lot of veg in. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's good, it's good. So, okay, that's the base sinigang. This restaurant in particular, um, Manam, they have a specialty, which is funny, right? This is the sinigang with watermelon. Okay. And there's a funny story about that. Watermelon? Yeah, with watermelon. <laughs> There's no way you're convincing me this is gonna be good. The, it was yesterday, and you know we were lining up for food at dinner. We were. And Abed was there, saying hi to Abed and his That's girlfriend. That's right, we did. Right? And I asked him, okay, what do you guys think about this restaurant, Manam? Right? And they're like, <laughs> oh, you know, it's good. And then the girlfriend asks me, do you like sinigang with watermelon? Like I've I've never tried it. She's like, mm, it's good. And then Abed's like, no, it's not. <laughs> so this is an interesting one because I told him this would break the tie. We'll see if it gets another tie. It smells stronger. There is indeed watermelon in this, ladies and gentlemen. I believe this is a watermelon. Is this the watermelon? Yeah. Here? See what it's like. I can't believe it. It works. It's it actually, actually works. really good. I'm genuinely surprised. I thought I would hate it. The sourness comes out stronger on this one too. It really works. How does this work? Because it's juicy, John. The watermelon soaks up the tamarind flavor. Yeah. And then when you burn, it's like. What do you call them? The 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 bubble tea drinks, you know, yeah. when you have the pearls yeah. and it bursts. The boba, yeah. Right, right, right. That's what it feels like, but it's in the sinigang. I didn't expect watermelon flavor to fit in. Whoever thought of this is a legitimate genius. This, 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 this is, is incredible. Actually, so this last one is actually my personal favorite Filipino dish. This one is called kare kare. Kare kare. Yeah. So sounds, kare, like, sounds very Japanese. It's funny because I, no one knows how this dish came about exactly. Okay. One theory is that. When the British briefly came to the Philippines, or from Indian migration, like Indian immigrants were looking for a way to make curry. We don't really have that flavor profile in Filipino right, food. Right. So what they ended up doing was crushing some peanuts, making a stew, and getting the color to look like curry. Right. So that's how the name came out. Kare kare, like curry curry. Yeah, okay. So it's a peanut stew. Okay. It's cooked up with a lot of veg. It looks good. You tend to cook it with tripe, so... Tripe, okay. Yeah. Now th this is where things are gonna get interesting. So wait, there's one thing as well, that you do with this dish. Okay. You do have it with a little uh, shrimp paste. Shrimp so this is called bagoong. Okay. Fermented shrimp paste. You get a little bit, mix it into your soup there. Mix it in. Yeah. Or have it on the meat. So this is just the meat. This is not the stomach. Or is this the stomach? This looks that like meat. That does look like meat. This looks like meat. Okay. Give, give it a try. Really damn good. I like the shrimp paste a lot. I can see why you add it. Mm -hmm. The shrimp paste really elevates the flavor. Here's the real question. What? Did the I give you tripe? I'm from the tripe. Put a little the shrimp paste on it. Because I love tripe. The texture is a bit funky. It's a bit slimy. I mean, not quite. It's nah. not, I, I can't do it. It's not, the flavor's fine. The texture kills me though. The yeah. texture, like, that I can understand. I don't think it's purely, the, it's not the dish. Any protein, like, try yeah, yeah. I just can't do it. There's, I get it. I, I mean, I've it. done it, but I wouldn't do it again. Yeah, it is a very chewy, but kind of tendon like thing. The pork meat with the shrimp paste and the, the, the yeah. orange sauce here. Yeah, I don't know if we should be trying the tofu sisig as well. Why not? Oh, wait, we can take not, a bite. At we're least not we'll against, take a the, bite. We're we'll not take against a bite. the vegetarians, Jonathan. No, we're not. Take a bite of this. This is something special. I've never tried something like this. Let's give it, I do love tofu though. Ciao. It's good. It does taste like sisig, except in tofu. I mean, I do like the original better. Oh yeah. Obviously with the actual protein, you know 100%. what I mean? For a, for a vegetarian style dish, you it's really good. can't complain. It's good. It's a, as good as you're gonna get it. All right, how do you feel about all the food? Your first bite into like Filipino I'm, food in the Philippines. I'm legitimately disappointed that yeah. I haven't found something I disliked yet. Point I was out. literally coming in, ready to be a hater. The only thing that I feel like I did not enjoy was the tripe. Yeah. But that is purely based off the, the actual the cut. cut yeah, yeah. Everything's fantastic here. I, I don't understand it. It's a lot of damn flavor. It it's is. It's a lot of damn flavor. And it's a lot of food for uh, basically one dish in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's time to just Kind of finish this all up, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know what, Jonathan? There is a story. Now, when you eat too much, you oh need a palate cleanser, God. Jonathan. Tell them the story I've told you. He loves vinegar. He says he can just chug it down. So oh, to cleanse just... the pal palate, he's just gonna... When I was young, as a kid, I would get one of these little Middle Eastern teacups. I used to get some white vinegar, whatever vinegar we had. I used to pour it in the little teacup and I used to sit there sipping it just like... 
I've, I've never... I used to do that throughout my whole life. I've never heard of anyone ever do that but you. What used to happen is our parents, if they weren't feeling cool at the time, yeah. if we messed up, we used to have to eat certain things, you see? Yeah. So they might cut us a piece of lemon, mm -hmm. make us just rip off the flesh and eat it as punishment for being stupid. Or maybe they go pick a chili from the garden, you know? Make us eat that instead. Yeah. And eventually, Jonathan, you learn to love those sickening flavors. You, love, you learn to love the intensity. And that's what's happened. Oh my God. It's fantastic. So you, so you crave for that time time back and you just chug some vinegar. The color's fantastic by the way. It really is. I'm kind of jealous we don't have this in Australia. I don't think I've ever seen pink vinegar anywhere else. You do get some coloration from chili. It's my wine, John. You do get. This is my wine. Well, there you have it. That's our first bite into this palate cleansed. Palate cleansed and we're ready to just finish it up from here.